How much of that did you overhear? No, I didn't have to hear anything. I just saw the look on Dorman's face when he stormed out of here. Scary, wasn't it? And I don't scare easily. But I still think you could beat him. Do you know something I don't know? I'm a good judge of character. <laughs> Nobody's that good. I've also checked you out. Your settlement in the uh, Whitaker case was very impressive. Thank you. For... That case was sealed by the court. How did you find out about my settlement? Not important. What is, is your reputation as one of the best litigators in the country. Well, as they say in New York, that and a buck fifty can get you on the subway. My money's still on you. Well, thank you. I'm very flattered. But don't make any mistake about this. This case is going to be very ugly. That man has a dark side, and something or someone has triggered it. This case isn't about money. I, I don't even think it's about revenge. Dorman is out to hurt and maim. Well, that was incredible. I never would have believed you could remove heart tissue without running the risk of post-op arrhythmias. Well, it was the hot topic at the conference last month. This was the first time I had a chance to try it out. You'd never know it. You were really under control. <laughs> yeah, that's me, Monica Control. It's just a shame it doesn't work outside the operating room. Oh, don't worry. We're going to have our innings against Dorman. Well, it isn't Mon Pa Kettle. Hey, I had lunch with your lawyer this afternoon, and... I thought I should tell you that I turned down her offer to settle. You see, I'm taking no prisoners. Because when this is over, not only will you cough up a big chunk of that quarter main money, but you're going to have to look for a new career. You filth. That's right, Ellen. You go ahead. You take a swing at me. Do it. Put your career in the crapper along with your marriage. Alan, Alan, come on. Um, let's go to recovery. I want to check in on the patient. I'll call Alexis later. We'll find out what that's all about. Alan, Alan, please. Emily, how are you doing? I'm not stoned, if that's what you're asking. Actually, I haven't touched the stuff since you gave me that little lecture the other day. Good for you. Um, I wanted to thank you for making sure that I got home safely and um, that my parents didn't see me wasted. Hey, any time. Listen, are you... Are you all right? You seem sort of sad. I'm fine. Come on, Emily. You're not the only one with good instincts about these things. It's my mom's birthday today. <clears throat> she died over a year ago. That's... Yeah, confusing when a parent dies. Monica tries to help. I don't know. It's I don't know. You feel guilty for betraying the memory of your mother. But at the same time, you're worried that Monica will think you don't love her. Wow, how would she get so wise? <laughs> well, see, I'm actually like 65. I just look young. <laughs> Listen, I gotta go. See ya. You look like a fugitive. That is exactly the way I feel these days. I'm afraid every time I turn a corner, I'm going to run into Dorman. I don't even want to go to that garage to get my car because I'm afraid he's going to jump me again. I'll tell you, I think we made a big mistake by not reporting it to the police. What good would it have done, Alan? He just would have lied and said I'd harassed him again. Really, I don't know how I'm going to make it to that trial without losing it. I think it's time we scored one for our side. What do you have in mind? Come with me. 